Who thought putting this fanfiction on stage was a good idea? I mean, I know, J.K. Rowling did, but... Cursed Child is literally garbage. No standards anymore. Come on, Joe. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Cursed Child. How do I even begin to explain Cursed Child? I feel like if it would have been a decade ago, she would have said absolutely not. Michael Jackson offered her a Harry Potter musical. Michael Jackson! And she said no! Today's video is a long time coming. I want to start this off by saying I've never seen it, I've just read it. And I don't know how it looks on stage. I'm sure it is better on stage than it is just reading it because it reads like bad fanfiction. So if you've seen it, you are more enlightened on the whole idea of Cursed Child than I am. But I'm still doing this video because it is something that needs to be addressed. I don't know how many people have done this video before me. The play's been out for a good few years now, so I'm sure at least a few people have. But today I'm going to be going over a few of the most prominent reasons why Cursed Child is trash. This play, it just, it ain't it. Let's just get right into it. I don't need a long intro for this video. First and foremost, the plot is all over the place. I have read fan fictions with better plots, quite a few fa fan fictions with better plots, and frankly, better writing and better characterization. What starts off by trying to resurrect Cedric Diggory, Re you know, bring him back to life. Or I should say, you save him so he never dies in the first place. Which is the most random thing, by the way. But that seemingly small, yet incredibly dumb mission by Albus and Scorpius turns into them traveling back in time like four or five times. And it just gets worse progressively every time. They keep on messing more stuff up. And all they were trying to do was to save Cedric. And the stuff that gets messed up is just some of the most bizarre, irrelevant crap anyway. Like Ron and Hermione never getting married in the one alternate universe, for example. That whole thing started with they actually went to the Yule Ball together and Ron never got jealous of Victor Crumb, thus he never realized that he had feelings for Hermione. <laughs> But come on, Hermione had feelings for Ron, don't you think that she would have told him at some point? Or he would have realized his jealousy in another way? Like, when she dated McClagan in their sixth year? I just feel like that whole thing is tied together by like the tiniest thread. And what did end up happening at the Yule Ball is that Ron started to be kind of flirty with Padma and boom, 20 years later, they get married. <laughs> Why? Just cause you are hanging out with somebody at a dance that equates to marriage? I mean, sometimes it does, but what is that? Like one in a thousand chance at least? <laughs> Didn't he ever date anybody else or, did, or were him and Padma just like, in it for the long haul. I'm sorry, but I would just love to see how that whole thing played through. Did they ever break up or anything? I know I'm reading too much into this because it's in reality such a dumb play, but some of these AUs are so bizarre that honestly, how they got to that point would probably be more interesting than the actual content that we got in the play. Another example is when Cedric got humiliated during the Triwizard Tournament, thus prompting him to eventually become a Death Eater. Like, paper thin, thin, thin piece of, of string here connecting these two dots. I do not believe that a character as noble and as pure as Cedric would ever become a Death Eater just because the school laughed at him. It's honestly insulting. It's insulting to his entire character. The character that we got to know in the Goblet of Fire is much stronger than that. And it makes me mad that that whole character arc that he had in the Goblet of Fire is just 
thrown away in this play. In another one of the AUs, I'm just gonna call them AUs. Because that's honestly what they are. They are alternate universes that would have happened if things would have been done differently. That's exactly what they are. Ugh, this play is such a fan fiction. But in another one of the AUs, Snape helps them. He helps Harry's offspring. I know that's by extension Lily's relative too, but we're gonna get into the glorification of Severus Snape a little bit later on, because that deserves its whole section, honestly. But yeah, they travel back in time bunch every time they try to fix things and it ends up just making things worse every single time. It, it gets quite repetitive. And then the big bombshell at the end that Delphi is evil and she is the love child of Voldemort and Bellatrix. <laughs> hey guys, just because you have a strong male leader of the dark side and a strong female leader of the dark side, it doesn't mean they had to have been in a relationship. I think that it's really gross that they even were. I mean, I'm really hoping that Delphi was just a one night stand. Cause I can't imagine Voldemort and Bellatrix. Ugh. Ugh. Another strange thing about Voldemort and Bellatrix conceiving a child together is while I think it's gross, when you think about it logically and about the timeline, it doesn't make any sense. They both died at the Battle of Hogwarts, and I read somewhere that their baby was conceived the summer before the Battle of Hogwarts, so that must mean that Bellatrix had Delphi at the Battle of Hogwarts, and you, we've read this book, we've seen this movie, she ain't pregnant. Bellatrix had Delphi at the Battle of Hogwarts, and we've seen this book, we've read this movie. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> and at the end, yes, we find out that Delphi is the child of Voldemort, but I also want to address the rumors going around about Scorpius at the beginning of the play when everyone thought that he was the child of Voldemort. I'm sorry, people literally thought that they sent his mother, Astoria, back in time to conceive Scorpius with Voldemort and then brought her back to the present. Even though Scorpius clearly bears a huge resemblance to Draco, and just the idea of sending a lady back to conceive a child with Voldemort and bringing her back to the present is just so weird in itself. And I can't believe that this is actually a rumor that everybody in the wizarding world takes seriously. I mean, why? Thinking that Scorpius is Voldemort's son when he clearly looks just like Draco? It does not make sense. It doesn't make sense. I don't care about the context. I don't care about how pretty it looks on stage. I don't think this narrative of this play makes any sense. I've literally read fan fictions on Wattpad. Wattpad with better stories. Quite a few, actually. I'm sorry that I keep laughing, but this play is laughable. It's laughably bad. It's a laughably bad play. All right, now that we've talked about some of the many, many flaws of the play's narrative, we are now going to talk about the characters. Here we go. Okay, first I'm just gonna talk a little bit about the new characters. This isn't going to be as in-depth as the old characters, but I think that it should still be addressed. First and foremost, Albus's character is quite bland. He is quite the archetype. He's a white dude with dark hair who struggles with whatever he struggles with and he spends a lot of time pining after Delphi and the parts where he's not being bland he's just being annoying and neglecting Scorpius. That said, Scorpius is the only good part of this play. He's the only character who really acts like a teenager who is relatable at all I honestly, I really like Scorpius. He's, he's a little nerd. The fact that Delphi literally tells Scorpius that he and Albus belong together. Okay. That said, Scorpius's supposed love interest, Rose Weasley, 
or Rose Granger Weasley is so insufferable. I actually hate her guts. She's hardly ever present in the play, but whenever she is present, she's just taking a stab at Albus and Scorpius because they're in Slytherin. They've been nothing but nice to her. She's just very, very prejudiced. Which goes into how Ron and Hermione raised her. And I refuse to believe that Ron and Hermione's daughter would have any kind of prejudice in any way. I mean, her parents are Ron Weasley and Hermione Granger. Come on. I know that Ron's prejudice against Slytherin is a joke and Hermione literally fights for equality throughout the entire original series. So why in the world is Rose's character such a little brat? I mean, I know what they tried to do. They tried to make her into kind of a clone of young Hermione, but they failed miserably. They tried to give her the whole, it's Leviosa, not Leviosa vibe, but they did a terrible job with it. She just came off as mean. I mean, come on. It's 2017 at this point. I really thought that we were done with this whole house prejudice thing. I'm a proud Slytherin and I'm a nice person. Nice person, Rose even though you don't think so. Delphi, who turns out to be evil, I know that that's supposed to be such a bombshell, but I honestly saw it coming. Okay, now we're going to get into the old characters and how they were absolutely butchered across the board. I was seriously so disappointed when reading this play for the first time. I mean, I've only read it once because that's all I could take. <laughs> Nevertheless, I was so disappointed. I was ready to sit down and read this eighth chapter of Harry Potter and reunite with so many of my favorite characters that I grew up loving. And they were so inaccurately represented. We're gonna start with the main man himself, Harry. Now it makes sense that since Harry is the primary protagonist in the original series, that he would be the protagonist among the adults in this play. But the character of Harry itself was absolutely just thrown right in the trash. I don't know how common this is among other Potterheads, but Harry is one of my favorite characters. He's not my very favorite, but he's one of my favorites. And to see him being such a terrible parent really made me sad. And again, it was insulting to his character. Now it's normal to get into arguments and fights with your children and with your parents, but Harry treated Albus absolutely awfully. I can't believe it. I mean, Harry went through so much. You would think that he would be more understanding of what Albus is going through and what really just caused me to throw this book across the room, I'm sure you know what it is, is that Harry would never say that he wished that Albus wasn't his son. He would never ever say that. Moving on to Harry's relationship with Hermione in this play and the metaphor scene where they're offering each other a piece of toffee. Now I read somewhere that that was allegedly supposed to be a metaphor for Harry and Hermione having an affair. Harry would never do that to Ron. Hermione would never do that to Ginny. It is seriously disregarding any intelligence, any relatability that these characters ever had. And even though they're adults and people change a lot from their teen years to their adult years, they seem like different people entirely. And if you've seen any of my other Harry Potter related videos, you will know that I don't like Hermione. I respect you if you do, but I think that there is really, really something to be said about a male protagonist and a female protagonist being just best friends and having more of a brother and sister relationship. There is seriously not enough of that. I'm aware that JK Rowling said that she thinks that there are ways in which Harry and Hermione are a better fit than Ron and Hermione, but to have this affair metaphor business in this play and to never address it again 
throws away that whole dynamic of brotherly and sisterly love that Harry and Hermione had for seven years. And that's just, I guess, a general thing about this play. They took so many things that made the original series so good and they just threw it right in the trash and did a complete 180 of that. They also took away a lot of depth from Ron's character. Ron's character in the books was the best friend anybody would be privileged to have. And in this play, he... What does he even do? He doesn't do anything. He gives Albus a love potion. That's what he does. He gives Albus a wizarding world equivalent of a date rape drug. Bad choices, Ron. Bad, 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 bad choices. So that's what Ron has been reduced to. The fun uncle who gives their nephew a date rape drug as a present. All right, Hermione Granger. Hermione Granger. I already talked about the alleged affair with Harry, so we're gonna skip over that. Hermione's character is all over the place. I know I keep saying this, and for Hermione, I really, really mean it. It is insulting to her character, what they did with her in this play. One thing that I didn't mention earlier about Ron's marriage with Padma is that in that alternate universe, Hermione became a lonely spinster who treats children at Hogwarts like garbage because she became the new Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher at Hogwarts. <sighs> I have a couple of issues with this. First, when did it ever become her ambition to become a teacher? When was that ever part of her character? It never, ever, ever was. Her passion and her ambition as a career throughout the series was always to better the lives of creatures who don't get equally treated, such as house elves. And if she was to become the Minister of Magic to do that, great. If she were just to work in some department at the Ministry to do that, that's great too. But regardless, she belongs as a career at the ministry. And just because she didn't end up with Ron, why would that ambition possibly change? I know that this is supposed to draw a parallel between Hermione and Snape, both of them losing the love of their life and becoming a rotting teacher at Hogwarts who treats the students very, very badly. But it works with Snape more because Snape was also abused as a child by his family, by his schoolmates, and the woman that he loved chose his sworn enemy. Does that justify Snape's actions even a little bit? No. And again, we're gonna get into that a little bit later now. But Hermione still had nice friends. She had a nice home life. The only thing that went wrong in Hermione's life to drive her to be a mean person and not go after her dream job is that Ron did not marry her. And that's essentially saying that Hermione needs Ron's marriage to reach her full potential. Okay. Yikes. Yes, I do believe that Ron and Hermione belong together. They're my favorite ship in Harry Potter along with Wolfstar, but I don't think that Hermione needs Ron to stay a nice person or not reach her full career potential. I mean, it's insulting. It's really insulting to her character. I don't think I'm gonna talk about Ginny. I feel like Ginny doesn't do a lot in this play. She's mostly just a cool mom. I already talked about the injustice that they did with Cedric's character. Um, I think the last character that I want to talk about here is Snape. Snape is probably the most controversial character in the entire Harry Potter franchise, and with great reason. He is a very complex character. You get to learn a lot more about him as the series progresses. I think that he's a good character. I don't think he's a good person. I don't think that it's justified at all what he did to students. And I already touched on this in my Patronus video, but he carried this bitterness that awoke when he was in his teen years into his adulthood. That's not healthy. It's not a healthy thing. But the glorification of Severus Snape in this play was absolutely 
terrible. Snape was a horrible person who abused children. And this play, just because he had a crush on Harry's mom, treated him like he was some kind of hero. And I hated that. They glorified him so much and they made him probably the most out of character character in the play. And he was only in like one scene. I'm actually gonna read a couple of direct quotes from this scene because I think that it is one of the most pathetic scenes in the entire play. And if you've read the play, you know that's saying something. Okay, keep in mind that Snape is saying this to Draco's kid. All it takes is one person. I couldn't save Harry for Lily. So now I give my allegiance to the cause she believed in. And it's possible that along the way I started believing in it myself. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? <laughs> There's also another moment when he tells Scorpius, think about Albus. You're giving up your kingdom for Albus, right? Which I would assume is a parallel to Snape and Lily and Scorpius and Albus, which, I mean, come on. Snape knew what was up. More than probably a good half the readers did. Scorpius says to Snape, presumably right before leaving, Thank you for being my light in the darkness. <laughs> I mean, come on, Scorpius. <laughs> Have you met Snape? <laughs> I mean, clearly you just met Snape's twin. I mean, I don't even like Snape as a person and I literally read that scene and was like, who are you and what have you done with Severus Snape? You imposter. It was so out of character. And the most out of character thing he said is the last quote that I'm gonna read which is when he tells Scorpius, tell Albus that I'm proud to share his name. That's right, ladies and gents. Severus Snape said those words. <laughs> I'm proud to share his name. Snape hated Harry. He hated Harry when he was born. He hated Harry on his deathbed. He hated Harry his entire life. And I cannot believe that he said that he's proud. I think we're gonna leave the characters at that. The only good character in this whole play, the only good part of this whole play is Scorpius. I think it's important that I address this Tumblr post um, entitled Some Criticisms Regarding Cursed Child That I Haven't Seen Too Much Discussion On by Victor Crum. Um, the account is spelled Victor Crum except the U is replaced with a V. So I guess it's Victor Crum. <laughs> I already talked about most of these points, but I'm gonna address the one at the bottom. And that is Though Hermione and Ginny do have roles in the play, it is still heavily male-centered. It's Albus, Scorpius, and Harry's struggles that take up a majority of the work. Rose's character is rarely present. Astoria is killed off early on for male character slash relationship growth. And Delphi, arguably the most important female character in the novel, turns out to be evil and disliked by all. I'm not even sure this play passes the Bechdel test. I don't think it does, honestly. Most of the women don't talk to each other, they just talk to the men. I hate this play so much. It's such garbage. I will never accept this play as part of the canon. I don't care what any of the writers or J.K. Rowling say about it or in regards to it being part of the canon. It's, it's not canon to me. It's too gosh darn dumb. And I don't care if it wasn't written to be read, it was written to be seen. I don't care how pretty it looks on stage or how good the actors are. The writing is terrible. The characters are terrible. The plot is so inconsistent, so dumb. There really wasn't a plot. It was just them going back to the original Harry Potter plot and changing it. I honestly would have just loved to see Albus, James, Scorpius, Rose, maybe a couple others just at Hogwarts. 
going on their own adventures, having fun, and having an adventure that revolves around them and not around Voldemort or any of the old Harry Potter characters that have been dead for two decades. You know what? What I just said made me realize something. You could say that this play essentially is when Harry Potter jumped the shark. <laughs> I didn't even know a fantasy series could jump the shark. But here we are. Cursed child is Harry Potter jumping the shark. <laughs> that is how ridiculous the plot is. That's how much it- that's how little it makes sense. In conclusion, Cursed Child is trash. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do not forget to like it, subscribe to my channel, and comment and click the notification bell, all of that jazz. If you want to see more Harry Potter content from me, please comment below what you might want me to talk about next. If you want to see other Harry Potter videos, I will put them right here. Thank you so much for watching and I hope that you have a magical day. Bye! Severus Snape, thank you for being my light in the darkness. What about Albus? Isn't he who your kingdom is for? Lily was mine. Albus is yours, Scorpius. Go to him. Go, confess your love. Oh, wait, he asks out Rose at the end? Huh. Huh. Didn't see that coming.